What's going on, Fight Fans? This is Capital of Combat. The name says it all. I'm Rob Jarrell, and this is the preview to tonight's The Zone matchup featuring Jaime Munguia taking on Terreno Johnson in a middleweight matchup. And on the undercard, we have two high-level prospects in Rashidi Speedy Ellis taking on Alexis Roca um, in a welterweight bout. This is going to be the most interesting bout of the night, uh, and I'll explain why right now. So... We have two, uh, again, two high-level prospects in uh, Rashidi Speedy Ellis and uh, Alexis Roca, both under Golden Boy, I think. I wish I was more prepared to know that. Um, as you can see, the Twitter fingers are going. <laughs> um, okay, so both guys are under Golden Boy. Now, granted... I know a lot of a lot of uh, proponents want to keep their fights in house, but uh, I would have let this marinate. I'm pretty sure this is going to propel one of these guys to take on the top ten in a very deep, very storied welterweight division. Again, I probably wouldn't have put both these guys against each other as of right now, but I understand because they want to make a star on one of these guys. To be honest, I think it's going to be Alexis Roca who they want to make a star. So it's up to Speedy Ellis to change their minds on that particular notion say what you will in the comments i understand i'm not trying to make it about color but i know oscar de la hoya and i know he has plenty of prospects and uh he's having quite a bit of trouble with them so he has to show a little bit of favoritism but that's neither here nor there let's keep going um this is probably the most intriguing matchup of the entire night um Rashidi Speedy Ellis is, as his name says, he is very fast. Sometimes I think the speed is to his benefit and to his detriment because he relies on his speed quite a bit, but he does have a few flaws that can be taken advantage of by his opponents. Because he's so fast, he doesn't at times place his shots as well as he could. Um, and not only are his hands fast, but he likes to use a lot of upper body movement to avoid incoming punches from his opponents. If you look at his Sosa fight, he was able to duck under punches, pull back, left, right, make his opponent miss. But a lot of the times he, he defensively moves his upper body out of position to punch his opponent at angles and really needing to make his opponent pay for missing those shots. And because he over moves, he tends to lean over his front foot quite a bit he seems to lean back quite a bit and when he leans back he tends to go straight back so an aggressive fighter a long reach fighter someone who is not going to just throw a jab or one two but keep on punching can eventually get to him so he is forced to move back against the ropes against a guy like alexis roca who is not only taller but likes to get downhill um especially with the one two coming out of that southpaw stance that's not going to look all that great for him what he's going to need to do against roca is make him miss but not over move and beat him to the punch he's got to throw very tight punches in order to counter alexis roca something else that he needs to do being a shorter fighter he likes to fight from the outside but he can't just throw one shot at a time and he can't be caught overreaching from the outside again he's going to be the shorter of the two fighters in the salsa fight a lot of the times he was overreaching he was leaning over his front foot or throwing himself out of position or even leaving his punches too far out and not bringing them back quick enough against roca this isn't going to work in his advantage because it completely negates his speed if he's defensively or out of position and roca is once he does a half step inside he's going to let his hands go he's going to pull that trigger and if he's smart he's going to throw a one two or one uh two t uh i'm sorry a one three to the body three up top follow up with a um a straight left and if Ellis is over moving, pulling straight back. He's not going to eventually, uh, he's not going to be able to avoid all of those punches. And if 
Roki gets on the inside, he's a bigger fighter. Um, he Well, he's going to look bigger. Rashidi Ellis is actually pretty strong, and he's going to have to tie up Roka. But if he's not, Roka's going to be able to throw that, um, that hook over the top and land with regularity. If Ellis on the inside can get on first, keep it tight, and tie his opponent up, and keep his hand working, he's going to score. Now, granted, I believe the referee's probably going to break him up quite a few times because Roka is not going to be able to punch. Having a longer reach, or he seems like he has a longer reach, he likes to get full extension, he eventually smothers his work. That's where we're going to get into Roka. Uh, Roka, patient fighter, likes to fight from the outside. He's going to jab his way in. And like in a Solomon fight, he can throw downstairs. So he's going to come with a one, one, two, one, two, boom, boom. Two hooks, follow up to the left. I said it, um, that's what Ellis should be looking at. He also has very good footwork where he likes to get, where he's going to be able to get his lead foot on the outside of his opponent's foot, uh, lead foot, which Ellis being orthodox, you can see it in the Solomon fight. Orthodox. He lines up that that straight left very well, and he's a very willing puncher. The only thing is he doesn't quite have the speed of Ellis. So if Ellis can make him overpunch, get on the inside, miss, and smother his own work, he can work on the inside and throw a good combinations. Solomon and I don't know if. Ellis is going to be able to do this, but Solomon was able to throw a one and whip around a right hand to the body very well and come back upstairs with a left hand. I don't know if Ellis can do that, but if he can, if he can step outside of Roka's foot, whip a right hand, come up to the top, bring the right hand back down the pipe, he should be able to tag Roka quite enough to keep him hesitant on the inside or stepping inside of his range. Also, Roka cannot let himself be turned. Anytime he lets, him, lets himself be turned, Ellis is going to have that right hand waiting. I think he's going to land it with regularity. I think he's going to be quicker on the draw. But if he miss, he's got to bring it back to a defensive stance. Or defensive, um, a defensive position. Again, Roke is very, um, very good at letting his hands go. He's patient, and he will know when he has enough space to throw that right hook, and it will be there. Look out for it. Um, this is a pretty hard fight to call. I mean, one guy is 16 and 0, the other guy is 22 0. You kind of hate to see prospects um, fight each other this early, but someone's O has to go, and. Um, Right now, I'm leaning toward Roka because he does not throw himself out of position, but he can be outfought if Ellis is willing to fight. I also think he has the ability to push Ellis back into the ropes and really let his hands go. Um, and again, I think this is going to go the distance. Um, I think they're going to surprise each other because, again, these are two high-level prospects who need a little bit of polishing. I'm looking forward to see the improvement of these two guys in this fight. Hopefully, they're able to bring out the best in each other and really get into working into that top 10 welterweight division. Uh, get into working in the top 10 of the welterweight division. I'm sorry. I um, uh, can't talk right now. So let's move into the main event. I'm not going to spend as much time on this because, to be honest, it's not that interesting. Uh, we have Jaime Munguia moving up to uh, moving up into his second fight at middleweight, knocking out Gary O'Sullivan in his first one, um, and he had the light WBO light heavyweight title. So he we know he has the pedigree, and he's a big fighter. He was a big fighter for 154, and from what it looks like, he's going to be a big fighter for 160. And taking on Terreno Johnson, who's going to be shorter, but he is pretty solid. I think he's going to be able to get off against Terreno Johnson. Um, Johnson has a high guard peekaboo stance. He likes to bully and get on the inside, position his opponents around the ring and work on the inside. The problem is, for peekaboo stance, for that high guard, I mean, Munguia is 
going to be able to place your shots very well, especially to the body. And once he starts placing that left hook to the body, because we all know he wants that left hook, he's going to be able to get those hands to drop and go upstairs. To be honest, I think he's going to... I think he's going to break Torano Johnson down. I think he's going to do it and probably do about a sixth or seventh round. I like Johnson, but he was knocked out in his two highest profile fights against... Um, Curtis Stevens in a fight. He was bullying Stevens. Um, he was winning that fight. He was on his way to win that fight. Then got knocked out by Stevens in the last round. And he got knocked out in the last round against Sergei DeRepichinko. And rightfully so. And DeRepichinko is not a power puncher. He does not have a lot of knockouts. But the thing about him is he places his shots very well. He's explosive. And you can't really bully him on the inside no matter how much Torano Johnson was, um, was trying to. He did beat um, Jason Quigley, but that's nothing to write home about. And uh, he struggled with uh, Francisco Castaneda, I think. Um, and he's a journeyman type fighter who's had problems with weight, moved up and down as high as cruiserweight, as low as um, 160, 154, whatever it was. But that should have not a, should have not have been a thing. And he drew with him. So I just think Munguia is going to, um, he's not going to be bullied. He's going to push him around and he's going to be able to drop those shots to the body. And if he does the old school move where he jabs holes or jabs and pulls down the guard, he's going to be able to swing um, a looping right hand into the face of Johnson and follow up with that hook. That's all I got for you guys. Tell us what you think. Are you looking forward to this set of fights this uh, coming Friday or I'm sorry, tonight? <laughs> It's already Friday. But are you looking forward to these fights? It's a good start to the weekend. It's a lot of fights going on. Look out for uh, the preview to Devontae Davis taking on Leo Santa Cruz and Alexander Usyk taking on Derek Chisora by myself and Hakeem. Uh, if you haven't already, like this video, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. If you already subscribed, hit that bell icon so you can get the latest and greatest from Hakeem and myself. Uh, Comment down below. Be respectful to us and yourselves. Feel free to hit us up at Facebook, Capital Combat, Gmail, Capital Combat at gmail.com, Instagram, Capital Combat. And until next time, fight on. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and cost. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire.